So we can say that a graph, let's just call it G, as a pair where V is a vertex set and E is the edge set. And we can say that a single vertex within this vertex set can be written as a lowercase v and a single edge in the edge set can be written as a lowercase e. So let's take one of these edges and define it even further. So if we have an edge E, we can say that this is equal to x, y, where x and y are adjacent vertices. And we can say that E is incident to x and y, and that x and y are neighbors. So what this might look like would be if we have the two vertices x and y, these two vertices which exist in our vertex set, and we have the edge E, and E is incident to both x and y. We can say that x and y are neighbors, and x and y are also adjacent to each other. And so in a graph, we can have a whole bunch of vertices in our vertex set. We don't just need two, and we can also have a whole bunch of edges in our edge set. And so let's talk about a couple common graphs that you might see. All right, so the first one is called a multigraph, and this is where multiple edges are allowed between two adjacent vertices. So for example, if we had vertex x and vertex y, we can say that a multigraph has multiple edges between the two adjacent vertices x and y. So we can draw um, a whole bunch of different edges between these two vertices. And if we define this graph as g, we can say that this is a multigraph. Right? And a different kind of graph, let's talk about what a loop is. So a loop is an edge with both endpoints being the same vertex. So for example, if we have a vertex, let's call it a, a loop would look something like this. Both ends are at vertex A. And so a third type of graph is a simple graph. And this is a graph with no loops and no subgraphs that are multigraphs. So there are no multiple edges between adjacent vertices. So an example of that, let me just draw one. So this would be an example of a simple graph. It's a graph that has no loops and has no multigraphs. All right, now let's talk about what a complete graph is. So a complete graph, we can write it as a sub n, where n is the number of vertices in the graph. And in a complete graph, every two vertices are adjacent. So a common example of that would be a k5 graph. So again, five is denoting the number of vertices. One, two, three, four, five. Let's just go ahead and connect the outer ones. And so in a K5 graph, every two vertices are adjacent for all of these five vertices. So I'll go ahead and label these. This is a really thick crayon, I'm just realizing. <laughs> And so v1 is going to be adjacent to v2, v1 also needs to be adjacent to v3, as well as v4, and it's already adjacent to v5, and we'll do this for all vertices in this graph, so all five vertices. So we'll connect v2 and v5, v2 and v4, and we'll do v3 and v5. And it looks like every two vertices are adjacent, and so every point is connected to every other possible point, and we'll call this a complete graph, or K5. All right, and there's a whole bunch of other types of graphs. There's trees and forests. There's graphs where they're connected and disconnected. There's a whole bunch of different types of graphs. Um, but what I want to talk about today focus on planar graphs. So a planar drawing of a graph G as a planar drawing would be on the plane such that its edges intersect only at their endpoints. So for an example, if we have the graph K4, as we saw earlier, this is a complete graph with four vertices. And so it would look something like this. So this is one way that we can draw K4 but this would not be a planar drawing because we see that these two edges are intersecting not at their endpoints, but somewhere in the middle. So is there a way that we can redraw this graph as a planar drawing? So let's try it again. So this time let's connect these two and we still need to connect this one to this one. So I'll just draw it around like this. So we can say that this is a planar drawing of K4 because its edges intersect only at their endpoints. And talking about planar graphs in general, we can say that a graph is planar if it has a planar drawing. So K4, even though you can draw it in a non-planar way, K4 does have a planar drawing, so we can say that K4 is a planar graph. So just a couple more definitions. A face of a planar drawing of a graph is a region that's bound by its edges and vertices, 
and it doesn't contain any other vertices or edges. So for an example on this planar drawing of K4, I'm gonna switch colors just for clarity, but we can say that this is a face here because it's bounded by edges and vertices, um, and it doesn't contain any other vertices or edges inside of it. And so similarly, we can say that this is also a face. We can say that this region here is a face, and we can also say that this outer region is a face. So we have one, two, three, four faces. Uh, four faces for this K4 drawing. And so what if we can draw K4 in another way? Let's just say we can draw it like this. So again, we have four vertices. Go ahead and connect them. But let's now connect the top and bottom one and then have the other two come around. So this is another planar drawing of K4. And so let's see how many faces does this one have. So we've got one, two, three, and four. All this outside region is the fourth one. So like, hmm, that's interesting. Even though this is a different uh, planar drawing than this one, they both still have four faces. And now let's count the number of edges in both for these drawings. I'll switch colors again. Let's do brown. So this drawing has one, two, three, four, five, six edges. And this drawing here has one, two, three, four, five, also six edges. And so, hmm, that's interesting. That's a coincidence. Even though these are two different drawings, how come they have the same number of faces and edges? And of course, they have the same number of vertices too. They all have four vertices since it's a K4 drawing, a complete graph with four vertices. And so naturally, I guess we can ask ourselves, is there some kind of relationship between the number of faces, the number of vertices, and the number of edges in a planar graph? And so actually, there is a cool formula and proof for that. And so we can call this formula Euler's formula. And so Euler's formula says that if G is a connected planar graph with N vertices that has M edges and F faces, then we can say that N minus M plus F equals 2. And so this is a way that we can relate the number of vertices, the number of edges, and the number of faces in a connected planar graph. And so let's go back to talking about K4. I'll just draw one of the planar drawings of this graph. And so N, we'd say number of vertices is four. M would be the number of edges, which is six. And the number of faces, F, is also four. And so N minus M plus F, does that equal two? Well, we can say 4 minus 6 plus 4. Yep, that does equal 2, and so that happens to be true. But if we look back at Euler's formula, you know, why does this formula make sense? And so let's do a proof sketch for that. All right, just gonna switch colors again, because why not? So let's say G is a connected planar graph. So if G is connected and planar, then we want to say that N minus M plus F equals 2. And so to do a proof sketch for this, let's use induction on the M number of edges. And so as our base case, let's write B, C for short, we can say that M equals one, so there's one edge. And so if we use n minus m plus f, two vertices, one, two, minus one edge, plus f, just one face, which is this outside region, yep, that equals two. So the base case is true. And so let's suppose that this statement is true for all graphs with less than m edges. So our goal from applying induction, it's gonna be to say that the statement is true for graphs with exactly m edges. And so let's just pick an arbitrary edge E and delete it. So if we have some graph G, we can delete some arbitrary edge E. So we can say G, the whole graph minus this one arbitrary edge E. Let's consider this graph G minus E. For simplicity's sake, we're just gonna call this G prime. So we can have two cases. The case that this edge E that we deleted was contained in two faces. So for example, this edge E that it was contained in a face here and also a face here. 
And so we deleted an edge that was contained in two faces. And we also have a second case where this edge E was incident to only one face. And so if this is the edge E, it was incident to just this one face. And it somehow connected this graph G together. And so let's start with case one. So in case one, E was contained in two faces. And so in this graph G prime, where we deleted the edge E, we can say that we now have N prime, M prime, and F prime number of vertices, edges, and faces. And so by induction, we can say that N prime minus M prime plus F prime is equal to two. So this means that in our overall graph G, which does include our edge E, that the number of vertices is equal to N prime because when we delete the edge E, we still have these two vertices and so these values for g prime having n prime number of vertices even if we delete edge e is still the same as our original graph so and the number of vertices in our original graph still stays the same now the number of edges we can define this in terms of m prime plus one because we add back this edge e when we're talking about our entire graph with the edge e for the number of faces in terms of f prime you can say that this is f prime plus one because when we have this edge in the full graph g we're essentially adding back another one of these faces so now we can solve for n minus m plus f and we don't know if this equals to two yet but we do have these values now. So n prime minus m prime plus one plus f prime plus one. That equals to n prime minus m prime plus f prime. And as we saw here, we know that this equals two. So we can say that in our graph, n minus m plus f is equal to two. And so for the first case where this edge is contained in two faces, one, two. So now let's talk about the second case. So the second case is where the edge is contained in only one face. For example, if we have graph G, we can simplify this to saying E is contained in only one face, so this whole outer face, and it's still contained in this overall graph G, so it somehow connects these two islands, you can say, call it G sub 1 and G sub 2. And so E is contained in the boundary of only one face, so this whole outer face. And so what happens if we delete E? So if E is gone, then we just have these two island things, which we call G sub 1 and G sub 2. So we can really think of this as it's really like two separate graphs now that we can consider. We can consider G sub 1 and then consider G sub 2. So if we apply induction on G sub 1, we have, say, N sub 1 number of vertices minus M sub 1 number of edges plus F sub 1 number of faces is equal to 2. Also, similarly for G2, if we're considering this whole graph again with this edge back in it, then for G, if we define G in terms of G1 and G2, we can say that in G, N, the number of vertices would be N sub 1 plus N sub 2 because when you add this edge back, it doesn't change the number of vertices that already exists. Similarly, simil similarly <laughs> for M, um, we can say that when we add this edge back, we have the total number of edges would be the number of edges in G1 plus the number of edges in G2 plus this edge now, so plus one. And for the number of faces, we can say that this edge is incident to just one face. So we can say one plus the number of faces here. However, we would subtract one because the number of faces here is counting for this other region, which we already counted for by adding back this edge E. So we would have F sub one minus one. And then similarly for G2, so F sub two minus one. And so just like we did before in case one, let's solve for N minus M plus F. And so you can plug in each of these values. So, so this is just rearranging the variables. And what we can notice here is we have n sub 1 minus m sub 1 plus f sub 1. 
side. So kind of solve similar equations here. So let's plug in the values two and two. And remember we did this by applying induction on each of these subgraphs, g sub one and g sub two. Here we have two plus two minus two, and that of course equals two. And so then we can say n minus m plus f. So here what we did before. So n minus m plus f is equal to 2. And so that's just a proof sketch for Euler's formula using induction on m number of edges.